Here we go. All right, we're doing waves of the electromagnetic spectrum on page 74 of your science book. Uh, fairly long, about, about 10 questions to answer. Not hard, just long. A uh, lot to try to cover here. So the video is probably going to be a little bit longer today than normal. Unless I can get everyone to be quiet and pay attention and listen and we just bust through it. So it's going to be long. <laughs> okay, here we go. See, I just burnt y'all and you didn't even... Y'all try, trying to be good and I'm sitting here just being mean to you. Okay. Well, you said you I did, but I'm not used to you doing it. I asked you to be quiet 400 times a day. You're never quiet, Leo. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. Can you imagine trying to take a photo with a radio? How about trying to tune in a radio station with your flashlight? Yes. Or heat your food with x-ray? Okay. So light, radio waves, and x-rays are all electromagnetic waves. But each has properties that makes it more useful for some purposes and less useful for others. Okay? So what makes light different from radio waves and the x-rays? Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about. All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. Okay? So that all waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. All light waves. Okay? But they do have different wavelengths and different frequencies. Okay, radiation in the wavelength that, that your eyes see is called visible light. Makes sense. Okay, but only a small portion of the electromagnetic radiation is, is visible light. The rest of the wavelengths are invisible. Your radio detects radio waves which have a much longer wavelength than visible light. X-rays, on the other hand, are waves with much shorter wavelengths than visible light. And if you remember, and I'm sure you all do because we talked about this, uh, how speed, wavelengths, and frequently frequencies are related. Remember, speed equals wavelength times frequency. We did talk about it. That's not one of those things you're going to be tested on, uh, not in here, uh, maybe if you take APs physics or something you, that you might have to know that formula, but here we're not, we're okay. Uh, because of the speed of the electromagnetic wave is the same uh, as the wavelength decreases, the frequency increases, okay? Waves with the longest wavelength or have the lowest frequency. Believe it or not, the longer one, the radio waves, actually has the lower frequencies. Isn't that weird? Uh, the amount of energy carried by electromagnetic waves increases with frequency. So the higher the frequency in a wave, the higher the energy is. Now talking about the visible light, if you remember, we've talked about this off and on. Uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is this big, okay? And we see this much, okay? And that's it, that's the visible light. Out of all of this, we see with our eyes about that much. Okay, pretty incredible. Okay, but the light is there. It's there, we just can't pick it up with our eyes. Okay, um, the electromagnetic spectrum is the complete range of electromagnetic waves that are placed in order of increasing frequency. Okay, so you see the full spectrum down here at the bottom of the page. Um, the electromagnetic spectrum is made up of radio waves, infrared rays, visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays, okay? Yes, Kayla. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say, like, the old, old pictures, and how they got their purple, it was actually from a, like, snail goo. It was like, did you know that? Purple I had heard that, yep. The type of snail that gave purple paint. Yep. That you make purple paint from, and that's how, like, the old, old paper pictures got their purple. You know how you make green paint? You up. Here we go. Huh? You ground up what? You pour my, my water together and smash What fairy tale was it where they crushed the children's bones and they, they make their bones? 2020. I think that was 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 2020. I
are the electromagnetic waves with the longest wavelengths and the lowest frequency. They include broadcast waves for radio and TV and microwaves, okay? So a broadcast wave is when a radio wave with longer wavelengths are used in broadcasting, okay? They carry signals from both radio and TV programs. A, a broadcast station sends out radio waves at a certain frequency, and then your radio or TV antenna picks up the waves and converts the radio signal into electrical signals. Inside your radio, the electrical signal then is converted to sound. Inside your TV is converted to sound and a picture. So uh, when WFMY Channel 2 out here on the other side of town, if you have a, the old type of antenna, not cable or, or whatever, which most people don't have anymore because most HO, HOAs don't allow you to have the big ugly antenna on top of your house because it's not pretty. Okay? But you can pick up local, you can't get like all the premium channels, but you can pick up a lot of local channels with just an antenna free because it's broadcast over the airwaves. Okay? That's radio waves. And they're actually, they have a transmitter that is broadcasting radio waves out and it leaves in a wave. Okay, and then it hits that antenna and is received and you have a wire that comes from that antenna and it hooks up to your TV, okay? That's the waves coming in and as it comes into the TV, the TV then transfers it into sound and a picture. If you think about that, that's pretty stinking incredible. Yes. I mean, even cable, I mean, it's being transmitted the same way. It's still, it's pretty, pretty incredible. Radio's the same way. It's radio waves at a, a certain frequency that comes across. That's why uh, radio waves have call numbers, like 97.3 or whatever. That is, you dial that in. That's the frequency that is coming in. That's why you can pick up that channel. Otherwise, you would only pick up, and they broadcast at that frequency. Otherwise, you would just constantly pick up just, just a bunch of scrambled mess. You're trying to pick up everybody's singles at one time, and you wouldn't get anything. So you think about that, that that's pretty incredible. I mean, we, we just take for granted we can turn a button on and hear music or whatever, but the technology behind it that has been around for a long time is actually pretty, that's pretty, pretty neat, okay? All right. Microwaves. The radio waves with the shortest wavelength and the highest frequency are microwaves. Listen to this. Okay, that's the radio wave. It's not the shortest wavelength. It's the radio wave with the shortest wavelength. Okay? That's the microwave. Uh, when you think about microwaves, you think about the one sitting over there that you can warm up your food, right? That's what most people think. But they can also be used in cell phone communication, Radar, all that, okay, that's actually microwaves. Uh, radar actually stands for radio detection and ranging. Uh, it is a system that uses reflective radio waves to detect objects and measure their distance and speed, okay? To measure distance, a radar device sends out radio waves that reflect off of an object. The time it takes for that reflective waves to return is used to calculate the object's distance away, okay? Uh, the way it works uh, on a, a, a police officer that has a radar trying to pick up speeders, it's the Doppler effect. Remember the Doppler effect? Yeah, it works the same, same way. Um, a, a police radar gun, uh, like the one shown in the picture there, will send out radio waves that reflects off of a car. And because the car is moving, the frequency of the reflective wave is different from the frequency of the original wave. And the difference in frequency is used to calculate the speed of the car, okay? When I was, back in the 70s, uh, you, had, you had a company that was real big. They were providing the radar guns to most of the police departments in the United States. But they were also the ones that was making the radar detectors that you could buy to put in your car that would let you, that would pick up the fact that there was a police officer somebody nearby with a radar gun. Bro. So you would know to slow down. Well, then they would get a better radar gun to sell to the police departments. 
But then they got a better radar detector that picked up that gun. So it was like a game to see if you could get the better equipment to keep from getting a ticket instead of just slowing down and driving the speed limit. The speed limit. So, <laughs> and a lot of states actually outlawed the radar detectors. They were, they were illegal to have. Okay. Did, uh, the US have I never had one. I never had one. So I could have used one a couple of times, but I never had one. Wait, uh, are they still in use today? Uh, not so much. I'm sure. I'm sure some people has them, but they, they, you don't hear about them quite as much as you. you did. Is it still legal, pretty much everywhere? I think they're. I don't know. You know, I know in Virginia they used to be illegal because they said their police officers didn't hide. I'm like, well, your definition of hide and my definition of hide because I got two tickets and both of them was in Virginia, uh, <laughs> and I rounded court and he was sitting back and I'm like, hmm. Not be hiding, you sure were hard to see until you pulled out to get me. So, but I was guilty. I mean, I was speeding, so I could, you know, you can't get mad. Well, you can, but you're kind of stupid to get mad. You get mad, anybody got to be mad at yourself. You don't want to be breaking the law. All right, if you turn on a burner on an electric stove, you can feel it warm up before the heat element starts to glow. That invisible heat that you feel is infrared radiation or an infrared ray, okay? Uh, these are electromagnetic waves with wavelengths shorter than those of radio waves, okay? Heat lamps, uh, infrared rays have a higher frequency than radio waves, so they have more energy uh, because you can feel that energy of an infrared ray as heat, those rays are called heat rays, okay? Uh, heat lamps have bulbs that gives off mostly infrared rays and very little visible light. Uh, these lamps are used to keep food warm at cafeterias. You've probably seen those hanging oh, out. Yeah. Uh, some people use this heat lamp. They have them, some people have them in their bathroom uh, because it helps to, uh, on, like on a winter, winter morning uh, when you step out of that shower and you're wet and the room is not quite as warm because you just came out of a warm shower. That heat lamp kind of helps uh, not to chill off, if you would. It still doesn't uh, make it any better, but it helps. Yeah, it helps. It does help. Um, infrared cameras. Uh, most objects give off some infrared rays. Warmer objects give off infrared, uh, infrared waves with more energy and higher frequency than cooler ones, okay? Uh, and a camera, an infrared camera, can take pictures using these rays uh, instead of light. And these pictures are called thermograms. And a thermogram is an image that shows regions of different temperatures and different colors. Uh, for example, the picture up there at the house, uh, that is being shot with an infrared camera. Now you're saying, well, what, yeah, but why? They can, firefighters can actually use those things if a building is on fire, they can actually use it to help detect if there's movement in the house which tells them there's somebody in that house and that they need, they might need to go in and I want to get, try to or, it's, or it's good for like seeking people. You can see you their can. body. The military you uses them. Now, in the military, if you put them on at night, night and basically that's what they're called, uh, you can see movement. You can see outlines of people because you see the heat. But like I couldn't put them on and go, oh yeah, that sphere is west over there. I couldn't you identify him. You can just say him. there's a person. You, you, can, you can see somebody moving, but you couldn't tell who it was. Because that, it doesn't show feature. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't show feature or anything. All you see is the heat coming off of the body. Yes. So, I have, well, my dad has an infrared sauna. What is sauna? Like, a sauna? Like, but. It just gives off the light, the heat. Uh, they can use them. They'll use them sometimes on sore muscles, things like that, because it, it, it'll penetrate into the muscle and deep, kind of like a deep massage type of deal, things like that. Yes, Sphere. Um, one of these days, I'm going to get me some of those binoculars like that have the, uh, like the infrared filter or the night vision filter, and I'll be like, I'll night find vision. you. Yeah, you got some. You got some uh, future stalkers who's going by uh, infrared binoculars. So keep your windows closed. All right. All right. All right.
All right, visible light. <laughs> Electromagnetic waves that you can see is called visible light. Uh, they make up a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we talked about already. Uh, visible light waves have shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies than infrared rays. Uh, visible light waves with the longest wavelength appears red in color. Okay, so the longest waves are red. The shortest ones appears violet or purple. Okay, uh, visible light that appears white is actually a mixture of many colors. Okay, white light from the sun can be separated out by a prism, and we're going to attempt to do this tomorrow. Uh, and colors of the visible spectrum is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Okay, Roy G. Bill. Okay, if you look at those, that's how you that's how you can remember that. Okay, uh, the prisms refract different wavelengths of visible light by different amounts, and thereby separates the color. So red light waves refracts the least. Violet wave uh, length or light refracts the most. That's what a, a rainbow is. Okay, it is the light being refracted. Okay, that's what it is. It's always there. We just can't see it. Okay, we just can't see it because it's all mixed together and it appears white. Okay. okay. Electromagnetic waves and wavelengths just shorter than those in visible light are called ultraviolet light, or rays, excuse me. Ultraviolet rays have higher frequency than visible light. Um, and it is great enough to either damage or kill living cells. Okay? In fact, ultraviolet lamps are often used to kill bacteria in hospital. That's why they use them now for COVID. They, you know, that, that was the big deal. You could buy the wands and all that stuff to clean countertops and all of that. Okay? Uh, small doses of ultraviolet rays are useful, though. For example, ultraviolet rays can cause skin cells to produce vitamin D. So if you go out in the sun... It's actually good for you to get out in the sun. It helps you, you, you to get, and it makes you stronger bones, stronger teeth. Wait, so the sun produces ultraviolet rays? Uh-huh. That's the UV rays that it talks about. However, too much exposure to ultraviolet is dangerous, okay? It can cause skin burns, okay? It can cause skin cancer. It can damage your eyes. Uh, now, you can apply sunblock, wear sunglasses, all that stuff will help, okay? Uh, that's why when you go to the beach and you, your mom makes you put on the sunblock, it's not a one-and-done deal. No matter how strong it is, you need to reapply it. If you're going to spend the day on the beach, you have to reapply that ever so often, okay? Uh, otherwise, you're still going to get burned, okay? So that's why. So when mom tells you to put it on, don't argue with it. But I did it already. Put it back on again, okay? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I had just started thinning out on top, and I knew it was getting thin, but I didn't really, you know, you, you try to avoid that, you try to make like it's not really happening, because, you know, but my wife and I went to the beach, and we spent a nice long time out on the beach. Well, I didn't lotion up now, baby, I go out in the sun, I, I lotion, this is the first thing I lotion up, okay? Uh, but I didn't lotion up the top of my head because, well, I had hair. <laughs> and I went back, my hair's so and we were getting ready. We were going to go out to eat, and I got dressed, and I went in, and I ran a comb through my hair. I hit my knees and begged Jesus to take me now. <laughs> I have never felt, and I've been shot, stabbed, blown up, and I have never felt pain like that in my life. It was, that was the worst. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I, the story I told you that story. It, it makes it sound a whole lot worse than it actually was. Yeah. But I count it. I still count it. Okay. All right. X-rays. X-rays are an electromagnetic wave with wavelengths just shorter than those of the ultraviolet rays. Their frequency are just a little higher than ultraviolet rays because of their high frequency. X-rays carry more energy than ultraviolet rays. They can penetrate most matters, uh, but the dense matter, such as bone or lead, 
a swords to x-ray. So it, it, it can tell you that a bone is broken, but it doesn't actually penetrate the bone. Uh, Superman could not see through lead. If you ever, he had his x-ray vision, but he couldn't see through lead because x-ray will not penetrate. That's why uh, when you go in to the dentist to get a cleaning, it's time to do the x-ray. They laid that lead vest on you as they x-ray. The little girl that takes the picture, uh, the, the dental hygienist, <laughs> It is taking the picture. She is in a. She puts on a little lead vest and still steps around behind a, a wall a lot of times to hit the button. Okay. Uh, the reason being, if you get an X-ray once a year at the dentist, it's not going to hurt you. Okay. But the dental hygienist, she might take seven or eight of those a day, five days a week. So she's exposed to a lot of x-ray, and x being exposed to a lot of it can be dangerous. It can, can cause cancer powers? and stuff. So she, that's why she takes the extra precaution. She's exposed to it a whole lot more. Okay, So don't, don't think, oh, they're going to leave. They put me here, and but she runs and hides. Well, you, you, might be the, you might be the 15th person that day that she's taking an x-ray on. You know, so, yes? Uh, when I went to the dentist, she has to get out of the room, and the machine does it itself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, they've got the new it. stuff now. Yeah, she so actually, I mean, I'll be in there, but she'll go out of the room. No, she does it the the Yeah, well, she doesn't need to be. All right. So too much exposures to x-rays, though, can cause cancer. Um, so you don't, want, you, know, you don't want to be exposed to it a whole lot, obviously. Uh, it, they can use it in industries uh, like engineering. Uh, they, they can hit, check steel and concrete structure to see if it's got cracks in it. Uh, they use it to check pipelines, oil pipe and gas pipelines to see if it's got cracks in it. Uh, so there, it's, it's, it can be used, it can be very useful uh, to have, obviously. Okay, uh, gamma rays are the electromagnetic waves with the shortest wavelengths and the higher frequency. The shorter wavelengths, higher frequency, because they have the greatest amount of energy. Gamma rays are the most penetrable of all electromagnetic waves. Some radioactive substances and certain nuclear reactions produce gamma rays. Because of their uh, great penetrating ability, gamma rays have some medical use. For example, a gamma ray can be used to kill cancer cells inside the body, uh, to examine the body's internal structure. Uh, a patient can be injected with fluid that emits gamma rays, and then the machine can pick it up, because they do have gamma ray detectors. Okay, um, some objects in space gives a burst of gamma rays, uh, but most of those are blocked by the Earth's atmosphere, so it protects us. Uh, so gamma rays telescopes that detect them must orbit above the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so there, there's a lot of use for that, and man has learned how to use it for, for good uh, and bad, unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, the Hulk, if you, if any of you are the it was gamma rays that, uh, was it David Banner, Bruce Banner, that Bruce Banner was exposed to that turned him into the Hulk and all that stuff. So, okay. Well, that wasn't too bad. It was a little bit less than 24 minutes, so that's not horrible. All right. Hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Bye.